I thought I was, I was going to die, but apparently I didn't, and I'm thankful for that. Less than a month ago, a 10-year-old boy from Newport News was shot in the back of the head by a stray bullet. Even more sad, Malachi Smith was at a friend's birthday party. This week, Malachi was released from the hospital, but he still has a long way to go, and his life will never be the same. 13 News Now reporter Robert Boyd is live in the studio tonight with his story. Well, David, I had the chance to speak with 10-year-old Malachi and his mother tonight, and they basically say that this bullet could have easily ended his life, but he says God has other plans for him. The old man knows a pretty near close. Listening to, to Malachi Smith read to his a, mother, you'd have no idea. Just 23 days ago, he was Chris, shot in the back of the head by yeah. a stray bullet at this Newport News apartment complex where he lives. You just heard consecutive shots. It was like, bah, 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 bah. they were going off. Malachi was attending a neighbor's birthday party and was playing outside with friends at the time. Ran down the stairs, screaming for him. Uh, and he wasn't answering. Malachi says he heard the shots and hid behind a fence. And that's when two more went off and it went blank right after that. All I could do was just run in, scoop him up and sit down and just apply pressure against my chest with his head. Moments later, Malachi remembers opening up his eyes to find a crowd of people standing around him. The sound of sirens approaching the apartment. They were all looking at me. My sister comes up and say, I love you. I couldn't respond. Malachi's mother, Holly, just kept praying. All I could do was just, I was just sitting there crying. I remember screaming, not my baby, don't take my baby. Those prayers were answered. Despite having a bullet lodged in his head, Malachi's life was saved. Yeah, I thought I was, I was going to die, but apparently I didn't. And I'm thankful for that. This is video of Malachi in the hospital one week after the shooting. But despite his positive outlook, this 10-year-old has a long way to go. He suffered brain damage and still has a hole in his skull. It's affecting everything from his memory to his vision to his balance. He can no longer play any high impact sports, football, soccer, baseball, basketball. He can never do that. This is a big disappointment to Malachi, who dreamed of playing in the NFL. Football was my sport. As soon as I started seeing it on TV and everything, I'm like, I want to play that. The family says they couldn't get through this ordeal alone. The community has come to Malachi's aid throwing fundraisers, while the Newport News Police Department stopped by to visit with their canine unit. If I could hug one person every day to say thank you, I would be busy for the next 30 years. The family is also still very much angry that the person responsible for the shooting is still out there. And there's no reason to be shooting at people or any, anybody's kid. Now, Malachi will have to undergo at least one more surgery to seal the hole in his head. And until doctors know exactly how much brain damage he suffered, Malachi will have to be homeschooled. But he still remains very optimistic that one day he will be a professional athlete, perhaps in swimming or golf. We wish him the best of luck. Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. Breaking right now, we've learned of yet another shooting on Trisha Lane in Newport News. You'll recall a young woman was shot to death inside her home there last night. But tonight, just before 10 o'clock, Officers rushed to the scene once again, this time near the intersection of Dresden Drive. They found a 21-year-old man with at least one gunshot. He was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Prepare for a hot, hot weekend. And no, not just because it's summer. With the heat index, we'll see temps in the triple digits. Let's see where we stand right now. It is 81, but it feels like uh, 87 as we take a look at the temperatures right here. All right, and uh, it's cooled off just a little bit, but tomorrow is going to be a different story. Right, Aisha? That's right, David. We're going to warm things back up. We're talking temperatures in the low to middle 90s as we go into Sunday. And when you factor the humidity, it's going to feel like it's in the triple digits. It's still pretty warm outside right now. Here's a live look overlooking downtown Norfolk. We've got clear skies. Temperatures at the airport right now at 79. That dew point right at 75. So it's definitely feeling warmer than the 79 degrees. You will need the ACs once again tonight. We topped out at 89 in Norfolk. Norfolk 91 in Newport News, Suffolk and Wakefield. 90 was the official high in Virginia Beach. We're nice and dry on radar. It would be nice to maybe get a shower in here to cool us down just a little bit, but that's not going to be the case as we go through the overnight hours. So for tomorrow, if you have any outdoor plans or if you're going to be outside for any amount of time, you'll certainly want to take some frequent breaks and don't forget to stay hydrated. We'll start off in the middle 70s uh, by tomorrow morning and then by the afternoon, we're back into the low 90s. 
90s. Although heat index values, when you do factor in that humidity, it will feel like it's closer to 100. We'll talk about the heat wave that kicks off this weekend, and we've got your 4th of July forecast that's coming up in just a little bit. David? All right, thank you. Tonight, the country trying to wrap its head around the violence that took place when a gunman stormed into a Maryland newsroom. As mourners remember the five victims at a series of vigils, investigators revealing new details about the suspect's history of making threats toward the Capital Gazette newspaper. Janae Norman is in Annapolis tonight. We ask that you join us now in observing a reflective moment of silence. A moment of silence in Baltimore. Candlelight vigils in Annapolis, honoring the five victims who went to work at the Capitol Gazette Thursday but never made it home. I sure hate to see him go. The faces of those victims on the front page of the Gazette, staff resilient, determined to cover the story involving their own. Several shots have been fired, a uh, possible uh, shotgun. The suspect, Jared Ramos, behind bars without bond, telling the judge today, I will not cooperate. Prosecutor saying he planned the attack, armed with a 12-gauge shotgun, hunted his victims, barricading the back door to the newsroom so they couldn't escape. There was one victim that had attempted to escape through the back door and uh, was shot at that point. The focus now for so many on those victims. Wendy Winters, a special publication editor who described herself as a proud Navy mom. Editorial page editor Gerald Fishman, he worked for the Gazette for over 25 years, as did John McNamara, a sports reporter. Sales assistant Rebecca Smith had just started at the paper. And Capital Gazette editor and columnist Robert Hyacin, remembered this morning as a mentor to young reporters. And the Gazette's opinion page making headlines today left intentionally blank with the words today we are speechless, honoring those five victims who this time were also co-workers and friends. Janae Norman, ABC News, Annapolis, Maryland. Suspect in the shooting accused the paper of defamation years ago. And according to the Virginian pilot, the reporter who wrote the article in question is now an editor at the pilot. Gerard Ramos lawsuit in 2012 accused the Gazette and reporter Eric Hartley was dismissed due to a lack of evidence. Ramos eventually lost an appeal in 2015. Well, now he's accused of killing five employees at the paper, of course, yesterday. Former pilot editor Steve Gunn is mourning the loss of the victims he knew. He tweets about victim Rob Hyacin. Rob put the soul in a story, and he was my friend. Gunn has also crossed paths with the suspect, sharing this tweet from Ramos, in which he called Gunn an expletive. As you can see, we blurred that out. Police say Ramos made repeated threats to the Capital Gazette newspaper. Tonight, we've learned how a high school student in Dinwiddie was killed. The medical examiner's office says 17-year-old Kaisha Atkins was suffocated. The body of the high school cheerleader was found Thursday morning as investigators searched the woods uh, behind her home. She was last seen alive by her family on Monday morning. The sheriff's office later arrested 21-year-old Anton Coleman on a charge of abduction. Investigators declined to say how the two are connected. A death investigation is underway in Norfolk this morning. Police pulled a man's body from the Elizabeth River near Town Point Park. There's no word on who he is or how he died. Right now, the medical examiner is looking at the body. We'll let you know when we learn more. A thief strikes in one of the most unlikely places in Virginia Beach. Tonight, police are looking for whoever stole a food trailer from a church parking lot. Gabriel Peniz uh, bought it after downsizing from a restaurant. He says the Church of Ascension on Princess Anne Road offered to let it stay there. For Gabe and his girlfriend Nikki, it was much more than just a taste of Italy on wheels. Now that it's gone, they're left with no job, a time when they need it most. They're expecting a baby. Obviously not having like a source of income is a pretty detrimental thing, especially at this time, you know, with the baby coming. I don't know what to say. Give me back the trailer, please. I mean, it's please. Take a close look. If you see it, the couple asks that you call police. They say at the end of the day, they're dealing with $20,000 here in losses.